Hello everyone, my name is Hugh Lloyd and I'm here on behalf of the Active Building Centre uh, to talk you through what they are, what they look like, how they work and why they're important. So these are some active homes. Uh, they've been built in Neath in South Wales. There's 16 of them and they work uh, as part of a sort of small development uh, to provide social homes uh, through the social housing provider Pobble and they include active building technologies uh, including uh, EV charging, storage uh, and technologies as part of the buildings that help capture energy that falls on them or is in their local vicinity. Uh, these two buildings are on the Swansea University campsite and the one at the back is the active office while the one at the front is the active classroom. Uh, they're both active in their practice, uh, but illustrating that you can design and build active buildings for any purpose or use. This is a quick run through of the principles behind active buildings, which I will come back to. While this is, gives you an illustration of where some of their benefits emerge. So for example, uh, an EV is a much cheaper way to run a car than uh, the cost of diesel or petrol. Uh, Self-consumption of energy you capture on your building tends to be cheaper than importing it from the grid. And you can get benefits from exporting to the grid. Uh, while, of course, one of the important reasons for thinking about active buildings is the purpose to which we might put them. And while a lot of this is driven by climate change and the need to uh, reduce our emissions significantly and relatively quickly, there's also an economic benefit and purpose. Uh, the UK would not be the only country in the world to deploy some of these technologies uh, to turn fuel poverty on its head and generate opportunities for energy wealth for individuals and communities. So just going back to those principles, uh, this is a new build. It's slightly different for upgrading an existing stock because what you should start with for existing stock is a consideration of how the building or the home is being used and uh, how the interaction of the user uh, works with the energy system. But once you've got an understanding of that, uh, these principles, broadly speaking, would apply to new build and retrofitting or upgrading buildings. And what you're trying to do is to make sure that the fabric of the building is as low energy demand as possible. Now, of course, we can already do these things. Uh, there are questions about standards and the nature of mainstream housing delivery that still need to be addressed to make this a everyday opportunity rather than perhaps a niche opportunity. But once you've got decent fabric, that means the building doesn't require much energy in the first place. Uh, the use of controls to help manage how the energy is used and how it flows. Uh, the potential for on-site re renewables to capture energy that's falling on the building often solar, but other technologies uh, can do that job, almost always renewable. Now, you can make more of that by installing the right sort of storage capability, and that can be both electrical storage in a battery or thermal storage in a heat store, hot water tank, and other things. That allows you to make sure that when you've got a lot of energy falling on the building, like the middle of uh, midday, sunny afternoon, you can capture that for use in the evening or the next morning or even further into the week or months ahead. The electric vehicle revolution that we're about to enter uh, will add a different opportunity. You could power your own vehicles renewably if they were active building connections because we're working on how these technologies uh, fit and work together. And it's also true that the battery of an electric vehicle could be part of the building storage capability. Now, all of those things together also offer opportunities to help the local grid. We all know it needs to transform to respond to climate challenges. And what you can do with an active building is delay the peak, uh, support the, the grid when it needs extra energy for things. And that should, could and should save money uh, because you won't have to reinforce the grid uh, in a traditional way with substations and more wires, that sort of thing. So all of these are opportunities that have the potential to mean your bills are lower uh, and even that you might get a return on the sort of energy capability of your active building. Look forward to talking to you shortly. Many thanks.